Today we're going to be showing you guys how to set up a McPherson strut suspension on the BMW 128i. This is a coilover suspension, there's a lot that goes into setting these up and making them work right. So let's get right into it. Alright, in this tutorial we're going to be installing a set of Fortunato 510 coilovers. Uh, we have our front shocks here, our rear shocks here. And then we also had to set, have a set of helper springs or take-up springs just in case we need them to get the correct ride height. Um, this is Fortunato's 510 series. It's more of their track-focused uh, coilovers. They also have a 500 series that's more for daily driving. Uh, there are quite a few different steps you need to go through to get these set up properly. In this tutorial, we'll go through all that stuff. Uh, let's get to it and get, on, get these on the car. Uh, one thing we need to set up right away is our camber adjustment. Um, this is all the way in. As you can tell before, we were trying to get more camber out of this car but we have it cambered all the way in. That way we can set our bumps up in the correct position to see when the tire contacts the car. Now what I mean by bump stop is this little guy right here on the bottom of the shock. Um, the coilover is set up right here and it's, if you hit a bump, this is gonna go all the way down and these two will touch. If you have your bump stop not set correctly, as soon as these two touch, that means you have no suspension left. If there's any larger of a bump than when these are touching, it's just gonna throw your car up in the air and you don't want that. So let's get this set correctly. Now we're gonna install this first without the spring. All right, now we can lower the jack just a little bit and we'll install our tire. All right, so we have our wheel and tire installed. We have our coilover installed without a spring right now. So we're gonna raise it all the way up until we hit that bump stop and see how much clearance we have between the wheel and the car. I also need to take a measurement right here. This is at the bottom of our travel. This is maximum droop. And we are at about five and nine sixteenths here. We'll go all the way up until the car kind of starts to go up a little bit. That means we're all the way stopped. So right about there, that's where our car is kind of lifting off the jacks a little bit. And here we have about two inches right on here. So that means we have between two and five and nine sixteenths, we have three and nine sixteenths inches of travel on this suspension. Now this is the maximum travel of the bump stop. So if we hit any kind of bumps or get into any kind of weird situations, this is as high as the wheel is gonna go. You need to make sure that we're not hitting anywhere here. Now we have plenty of clearance everywhere. I believe we're just barely hitting on the inner fender wall there. So we're gonna have to raise the car up just a little bit. Now in order to adjust our bump stop down, uh, in other words, raise the ride height, we just need to loosen this bottom collar up and make this collar go up compared to this. So we're gonna turn it to the right go up about a quarter inch. We'll see where that gets us. As you can see, we were at five, nine, five and nine sixteenths and now we're at five and 13 sixteenths. Or we raised the car about a quarter inch. Okay, we're just raising our car up now. We are at two and a quarter about. We are free spinning there. We are free spinning there. That seems like a pretty good spot right there. That is our maximum compression. Up next, we need to get our spring installed. Now, according to Fortune Auto directions, we want a quarter inch of preload on this spring. This is a seven inch spring. So we need to compress it down to six and three quarters and install it on the car. Still at that five and 13 sixteenths. We'll raise this up to see where our ride height is going to be. So right about there, it's starting to lift up the car. As you can see, we only went up about an inch. So right now we have about an inch of droop and we have about two and a half inches of compression, which is not what you want. Now this is a perfect example of having not enough compression travel. 
every time I would hit a bump, the suspension was bottoming out and throwing the car up in the air, and basically you're just kind of out of control then for a little bit. This was Button Willow in uh, 2020, I believe. Uh, overall, a rough weekend because I couldn't figure out what was going on, but that is exactly what you don't want to be happening on track. Shock setting is supposed to be in the middle, so we should have equal parts droop and compression. So we need to lower the shock on the shock tower. And in order to do that, that's gonna loosen up the coilover, which you'll see. And we'll have to add a take up spring in order to take up the space. So basically what's happening here is our spring is compressing, taking load of the car, but it's only compressing one inch. So we're only using one inch of the shock. So we need to lower this right here. We're gonna get rid of our preload in order to use more of the shock on the compression side. And when we do this, essentially we would want this about three quarters of an inch lower. And when you do that, the spring gets loose. In order to keep that spring tight, we need to put the helper spring on there, which is gonna change the height of this anyways. But we'll have to readjust uh, the preload and figure out where that's gonna be in order to get our ride height in the right spot so we have equal parts droop and compression. Now there is a way to figure out our spring preload with the take-up spring. So I'm gonna go ahead and compress it all the way. Um, that's how the spring is gonna be when it's on the car and at ride height, it's gonna be compressed all the way. So we need to add six and three quarters of an inch, which is the spring preload, plus this spring of one inch, plus another three quarters because we need to lower the spring three quarters of an inch to get the shock in the halfway position for a total of eight and a half inches of spring preload. Bump stop is set at two and a quarter and we're sitting at four and a quarter right now, which means we have two inches of compression and only inch and a half of droop. So I'm gonna go ahead and lower that just another quarter inch to get us right in the middle. Now in order to get that right in the middle, I just lowered this collar on the sleeve a quarter inch. So right now we are right in the middle of our shock travel when we are set at ride height. If I need to change my ride height anymore, all this is gonna stay the same on the sleeve and we can just loosen this up and we can turn this whole assembly together to raise or lower the car. It's not gonna change our shock travel, but it will change our bump setup. So if I lower the car, our bump setup's gonna go up and our tire has the risk of coming in contact with the car. But we can find that out later on the track and go lower if we need to. Just to make sure we are still at that five and 13 sixteenths. This is gonna be about our ride height. We're at almost four inches. And if you remember, our bump stop is set at two and a quarter. We have an inch and three quarter compression and an inch and three quarter droop, which is exactly what we want. A little public service announcement here at the end to make sure you get all your parts in before you put everything back together. Otherwise it has to all come back out. That's it for today's video, guys. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting this car on the track and seeing how the new suspension holds up. The first event with the car is gonna be North Star Speed Summit, which is at Brainerd International Raceway, June 7th through the 9th. Uh, previously Proving Grounds, and previously Carmageddon, it's got a new name now. So that's gonna be our first event. We'll be doing autocross and road course and seeing if we can break that 100 second standing start time. Mm -hmm.